What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to look at sprites and classes for Pygame and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at classes and sprites in Pygame. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime memberships, all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're gonna look at classes and sprites. And I've got this very simple example where we've made a bunch of Aspens up on the screen. Aspen is my dog, in case you're not familiar. We just have them moving down all at a different sort of velocity. And this is important for a bunch of different reasons. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Pygame series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So in the last few videos, we made this Aspen game called Feed Aspen. And here's the code for that. If you're not familiar, go back and look at the playlist. And we can see there is a lot of code and it's a lot of reused code, you know, we're like recting and blitting and doing all kinds of things multiple times. And it's just sort of messy. So those were intro videos to Pygame just to give you the sort of concepts. But in reality, you're gonna use object-oriented programming classes for a lot of this stuff because classes allow us to create little snippets of code and then reuse them over and over again instead of having, you know, 18 pages of code that all does the same thing over and over again. So we're going to start to learn about classes in this video. We're also going to start to learn about sprites, which are images, basically. Uh, from now on, we're going to be calling them sprites instead of just, you know, images. That's what we're going to do. So I've got sort of the code that we've been using, but I took out a lot of the stuff from it. I took out all the sound effects and all of the text, and also the dog food, and I just left Aspen. I'm calling this Aspen2.py, so if we save this, head over to our terminal. I'm in my C slash games directory, got my virtual environment turned on. Let's run Python Aspen2.py. And when we do, we just get this very basic screen. It's a rectangle with one Aspen on it, and that's all there is to it. Now, what we want is like five or more Aspens up at the top, and then we want them all to sort of move at different velocities. Now, if we were doing this the old way we learned previously, we would have to create five separate Aspen images and have them all coded differently to move at different paces and all this stuff. We could do all this with one class and one call to that class. So that's what we're gonna look at. So let's head over to our code. And again, this code should be familiar. So let's start to modify it. So we're gonna take all of this stuff and turn it into a class. So let's define an Aspen class. So if you're not familiar with object-oriented programming, class-based programming in Python, this may seem a little weird. If you have any experience with classes at all, this is gonna be old hat. So uh, just kind of try and follow along either way. So let's call our class Aspen. And Aspen is an image and that's a sprite. So we need to inherit pygame.sprite.sprite. .sprite. And you'll notice one is lowercase and the other one is capital, right? To start out, we need to initialize this thing. So let's define our underscore underscore init underscore underscore function. And we always want to pass in self and let's pass in an X and a Y. The X and the Y are going to be coordinates. So that'll help us place our Aspen image on the screen somewhere, right? So we are inheriting this. So we need to initialize it as well with a super. So let's go super dot underscore underscore init underscore underscore and that doesn't inherit anything. Notice there are no spaces between these underscores, right? It's all sort of connected in one long thing. So like for instance, don't put spaces there and don't put spaces there. That's sort of something we see newbies kind of mess up sometimes. In our class, what do we want to do? Well, first let's define our image. And down here in the old way, we defined our image just like this. So I'm going to copy this and comment this out and bring it up here and paste this in. Now, these are classes and with classes you don't just define a thing it's always self dot something so i'm just going to call this self dot image instead of self dot aspen so okay that looks good now let's get our rect let me move this stuff down and again it's just going to be the same thing but again it's going to be self dot rect and then we'll set that equal to our self dot image dot get underscore rect. And again, this self dot image is just this guy we just defined right here. So that looks good. And then finally, we're going to position the image. 
And again, this is just going to be self dot whatever. And oh, forgot to comment this out down here. And here we dot centered it, and then we gave it an X and a Y coordinate. Instead of doing dot center, I think this time I want to do dot, well, let's go rect dot top left, I say. And then we're going to pass in an X and a Y coordinate, which get passed in right through here. Right? So, okay. Now, if we want to move the image, we need to give it a velocity of some sort. So let's go self dot velocity. And let's set this to random dot rand int. And then I don't know, say between one and five, or maybe we go between one and 10. I'll just keep it one and five. Now we can use random dot rand int because up here we imported random earlier, a couple of videos ago when we were working on this code earlier. So, okay, that looks good. So this is our class, right? So anytime we want to create an Aspen on the screen, we could just call this class, right? Pass in some coordinates, X and Y, and we're good to go, right? So very, very cool. Now, that's if we want just one Aspen. What if we want like 10 Aspens or, uh, you know, five Aspens or a whole lot of Aspens? Well, to do that, let's come down here, make some space. We can create an Aspen group. And groups are really cool. They allow you to make groups of things, right? Groups of sprites. So let's call this the Aspen group. And this is going to equal a pygame dot sprite dot group. And that's it. Now we have a group of Aspens. Now, if we want to actually put them on the screen, let's create, say, five Aspens. So let's create a loop and let's go for i in range of five. So we want five of these things. And then what do we want to do? Well, let's just create an instance of our Aspen. So to do that, we call any variable. I'm just going to call it Aspen. And then we're going to set that equal to our Aspen class. That is this guy right here that will create our Aspen. But you remember our Aspen class needs a couple of things. It needs an X and a Y, right? So let's have it put it at, um, I want to space these say, I don't know, 150 each apart. So let's go I times 150. That's this loop I thing here. And then let's put it at down 10, right? Something like that. We've sort of positioned them, but now we need to add them, right? So let's go Aspen underscore group dot add. And what are we adding? Those Aspens that we just defined right here. So, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and save this. Now, this sort of creates all of the things, right? But we still have to blit them onto the screen. And we're not actually blitting anymore because we're doing sprites. And with sprites, you don't blit, you draw them, right? So we need to come down here. And here we've created a silver screen and here's where we're blitting it, right? But like I said, we're not blitting anymore, but instead let's say draw Aspen Sprite. And here we just call Aspen underscore group dot draw. And where do we want to draw this? We want to draw it on our screen. Remember our screen we've defined, you know, all over the place, at the very beginning right here where we got, you know, the height and width of the screen. And then down here where we made a silver background here, we can just do it like that. So let's go ahead and save this and see if we messed that up. I think we did a pretty good job, but you know, I am the king of typos. So let's come up here and let's run aspen2.py. And when we do, it looks pretty good. We got one, two, three, four, five of these guys. They're spaced roughly 150 pixels apart each. Uh, there's down, they're down a little bit, a little 10 there, maybe-ish. And yeah, looks pretty good. Now they're not moving. How come they're not moving? Well, we didn't tell it to move, right? Let's say draw and move Aspen Sprite. So to move them, we just, uh, let's see, did we anywhere else in the past update? Don't remember past videos, but we can just dot update. So let's go Aspen underscore group dot update. So this will call the update function of our Aspen group, which is inheriting Aspen, which is this class. Now we don't have an update function in this class, so we need to define one. So let's define an update function. We always wanna pass in self. And here, let's just go self.rect.y. We wanna move them down and let's plus equal self. What speed do we want them to move down? Well, self.velocity. 
and that velocity is right here. So every time we create an aspen, it will be given a random velocity. So some of them will be moving at a speed of one, some of them will be moving at a speed of five, some of them will be moving at two. They might all be moving at two if they just randomly happen to be all given two. I don't think that'll happen, but it could happen in a random infinite universe, right? That looks good. So again, it's self dot because we're in this class and anytime you do anything in a class, practically it's self dot whatever, right? So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. So Python aspen, oh, there they go. Right. Some of them are moving fast. Some of them are moving slow. These two seem to be moving at the same and uh, very cool. Now this is, you know, kind of a silly thing. Whoa, whoa, now they're all moving fast. Every time we run it, you'll notice they, they're all given different speeds because it's random each time. Uh, but like I said, this is a silly thing. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but this is actually kind of cool. Think about it. If you're doing like a space invaders game, and the spaceships were coming down from the, the top, right? You would want them to maybe all move at a different speed or whatever. If you had a little ship at the bottom, you had to move it around and shoot at each one as they came, you would use something like this, all kinds of different things. But the main thing I want you to start to wrap your brain around is object oriented programming with Pygame, because you can see if we open up our original Aspen file, this is a lot of code. And granted, we didn't do like sound effects and text in this one. But here, I mean, this is not much code to create an image on the screen, as many of these as we want, move them around very easily, just like this and like that. And that's all there is to it. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 180,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.